G'day guys, Shane here. Today what I'm going to show you is a little bit of an insight into what I use on my phone every single day. What happens and the way this video came about is when I've done tutorials and I've shown you screen recordings of what's happening uh, on my phone as I'm doing something, uh, a number of people ask me, what is that icon that you've got there or what is that app that you're using there? So what I thought I'd do is I'll show you what's on my phone. Hang around, let's get into it. So when it comes to these uh, apps that I'm using here, I basically divide them into three categories. One is productivity, one is pleasure, and the other one is photography, because this is a photography channel and I'd be a fool if I didn't cover those. So what I'll show you first, actually I'll show you this photo first. This is the photo that I have on my wallpaper. Um, and what I might do with this, if you want this as your wallpaper, head over to phonephotoschool.com.au. I'll put this photo there so you guys can use it for your own wallpaper if you desire. But that photo was taken actually with the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. How is that for a phone? Taking that sort of an image with a phone, Milky Way, windmill, bloody awesome. Anyway, this is what I have on my home screen. Um, and the way that, that I set up my home screen are the things that I use all the time, every time I look at the phone, I want to see a snapshot of something, and that's what I see there. And on the second page is the apps that I use pretty well on a daily basis. So I'll go through what's on the home screen here, then we'll go through the categories and the different apps that I use for those categories. Up the top left-hand corner, you see there the fitness app from Apple. If you've got an Apple Watch, uh, you know what these circles are. Basically, it's going to motivate you every day to get up, get moving, and fill those circles in. And I find that to be a really, really good motivator. Uh, if you've had a day not working, not out there, physically active, um, you might be sitting in front of the computer all day, um, those circles aren't being filled in, and this is gonna motivate you at the end of the day, get out there and fill those circles. Next to that is the clock, and the clock tells the time. Just tells the time. Below the clock is the batteries, and the batteries of everything that's connected to this via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It's going to show you um, the battery percentage of the phone. It's going to show you the battery percentage, in this case, of the uh, Apple Watch that I'm wearing right now. If I had a Bluetooth headset on, it was connected to the phone, it would show you the battery level of that as well. The one that you're all waiting for is the one next to that. It's that white one there, and that is the PhotoPills widget. And the widget that I'm using from PhotoPills is the moon phase widget. So it's going to see, you're going to see here, um, it's, the moon's going to rise at 5.30 in the afternoon. It's going to set at 6.30 in the morning and it's 98.8% full moon. So there's a lo lot of light out there tonight. And it's probably, get, it was telling me now, there's no point going out trying to do astrophotography tonight because it's just too much moonlight out there. Um, and below that, we've got all the regular apps that you would see normally, the camera app, Google Mail or Gmail, regular mail, Messenger, Instagram, Facebook, photos, and a calendar. And down below that, the regular apps there, the, the telephone and so forth. The one that you may not know is that red and white one there, and that is the YouTube Studios um, uh, app. And basically what this will show me is comments and stuff that you guys are making on um, uh, the, the channel. And it lets me know that someone's commented, someone might be asking a question or something like that, and I like to answer as many of these questions as I can. So the more I see them, the more I answer them, basically that. So when it comes to productivity, there's one app that I use all the time, and that is Evernote. And Evernote is, if you're not familiar with Evernote, what it is is a way that you can create notes, sketches, photos, all those sorts of things. And basically it's where you I jam all my ideas. So I might be out doing um, some sort of job or going for a walk in the morning, doing something, and I think, that's a really good idea, I need to research that. I'll quickly punch it into Evernote, and as I sit down here in front of my Mac, I can open up Evernote on the web page, and all the things that I've put into the phone are right there as well. And anything, as I sit here and research my videos and video ideas, and I might start putting bullet points in that I wanna cover in a video, I'll put them into Evernote, and when I get to location to film a video, I'll just pull up Evernote on my phone, and all the stuff that I've done on my desktop, is on my phone. It's such a good tool for doing what I do. Next to that is an app called Cozy. Now Cozy is, well, it's it's an app for organizing stuff. What I think what it was designed for is families with teenage kids and stuff like that who might need to go to football training on a Tuesday afternoon and 
uh, another kid needs to go to band practice on a Wednesday afternoon and it would all be in this calendar <clears throat> and everybody with the app can see who's where at whatever time. Now, in my case, my wife has her own business, I have my own business, and if I think, well, um, you know, we might be invited to go away somewhere for a weekend, and, and I think, well, can we do that or not? And I'll have a look and see that she might have a trade show on or something like that, and we may not go to that. So it's a good way to merge your calendars, gives you good reminders and things like that. It's a really good productivity app to help you organize yourself when there's multiple people playing their own game in the same household. Very, very good app. Um, next to that would be the watch, and if you've got a watch, you know what that is. Um, and next to that would be the pedometer. The thing I didn't really know about the Apple Watch is that it didn't have a, a good pedometer in it. So um, I've added that and I've added the pedometer to one of the complications on, on this here, and I can see how many steps I've done each and every day. So not only am I closing the circles, I'm trying to hit that 10K of steps as well. The last one here is the BOM. You can see there, BOM Weather, B-O-M Weather, Bureau of Meteorology. That's basically a weather app, and pardon me. And if you are into photography, landscape photography, you want to know what the weather's doing. So not only am I looking at the, um, the moon coverage, I'm also looking at what, what's gonna happen with the clouds. If there's clouds there, obviously I can't take photos of the stars. So that's a pretty important photo to me, uh, pretty important app to me as well. Next up is pleasure and the apps that I use for pleasure. And, and across the top here, you've got across the second row, it's Audible, and Audible is all about audiobooks, and I listen to a lot of audiobooks. From day to day, I can sit in a tractor for a few hours, I can sit in a tractor all day, and it can get pretty freaking boring. So I'll throw my Bluetooth headset in, put one ear in there, one ear not covered so I can hear what's going on still, and I'll listen to an audiobook, and any audiobook you want. And Audible is probably, well, Audible is the best app for listening to audiobooks, in my humble opinion. It's just sensational. You pay for the books, everybody wins, you get to listen to a good story, the author gets gets paid commissions on what they are, and the uh, creators who sit there and do the voiceover acting for these audio books, well, that works as well. So everybody wins in that. It's I think it's a good solution. Next down is Spotify, and Spotify. I'm not. I'm, I've got. A, I'm, I'm an Apple. I'm an Apple fan. I've got iPhone, watch, iPad, iMac. I've got all Apple stuff, but I don't use Apple Music. I think Apple Music is subpar when it comes when you compare it to something like Spotify. Spotify is just the duck's nuts as far as this sort of thing goes. I, I listen to music, it suggests music to me, it does all that sort of stuff and it, and it does it really, really well based on what I listen to. Apple does that to an extent, but not nearly as good as what Spotify does, obviously. Um, and all, and you've also got all those podcasts and I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. I listen to iPhoneography podcasts, Greg McMillan, now you're watching, get to say good day. And uh, I listen to a lot of YouTube creator um uh, podcast as well so like things like Dusty Porter and vidIQ those sorts of guys I listen to those and, and you learn a lot of stuff as well my favorite podcast out of every podcast has nothing to do with photography it is stuff you should know and they've been going for years and years and years and years it's a general sort of basic general knowledge thing stuff that you just well it's called stuff you should know because it's stuff you should know it's just an amazing podcast definitely worth checking out after that is photography, and this channel is all about photography, and these are the photography apps that I use. As a photographer with an iPhone, the camera that I use all the time is the native camera app. Simple as that. It does it really, really well. It's a good app, takes good photos, and they just make it better and better and better. And the other apps that I will use for photography are the apps that the camera app just doesn't do. So for example, my favorite app at the moment, and it's been my favorite app since I've found it, is Even Longer. Even Longer is just a sensational app for taking long exposure photos. And they made it even better when they did uh, light trails and star trails. And even in the video that I did, and I'll link it at the top here, of the Even Longer app, there was a couple little things I thought, you could make that a little bit better. And I suggested it in the app. <clears throat> And he, I suggested it in the video, I should say, and he's actually, the creator, the developer, has made those changes, some of them, to the app, and it just made it better. So it's an app, it's a, 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 an app that just keeps on getting better and better and better and better and better. It's a very, very good app. Can't recommend it enough. Um, next, that is Lightroom, and Lightroom, unless you've been uh, living under a rock, you would know that Lightroom is just a sensational app for editing photos. That's a goat's nose. Um, but when I'm trying to take a photo that it doesn't quite do what I want it to do with a native camera app, uh, I can go back um, 
into Lightroom and open a camera and then I've got full manual control there of a camera up to one second and to be honest that's just that's just bloody great um, the good thing about Lightroom is that if I take a photo or edit a photo in Lightroom on my phone I can then put it to the Creative Cloud bring it down to my Mac bring it down to my iPad and do editing on all three of those regardless of where I am all I need is an internet connection it works really really well um, next that is Snapseed and Snapseed well you would know um, Snapseed it's it's a free version I won't say it's a free version of Lightroom because it's not quite that but it's an editing program that is free it's owned by Google and it does almost everything that Lightroom does not quite as good as Lightroom but it does a lot of what stuff a lot of the stuff that Lightroom does do um, you know about Light, you know about Snapseed I'm not going to harp on about that next to that is RNI films I've done a video and I've put RNI films in these a couple of times and it's a good app in fact it's a great app for replicating vintage look film I'll open this up load a photo for you so you can see it um, let's go into the recents and I'll put this track this truck that I shot in a video a couple of weeks ago um, and I can just it's a one touch change what this is going to look like and it's going to give it that look it's going to emulate the film look um, of old film um, you can see here it's just it's a it's a one touch thing and if you didn't like exactly how that turned out it's quite like that I can hit the tool icon that's right there and then change all the things that are internal of that as well so if I want to bring up the the shadows of that I'll go across the shadows and increase the shadows and it does a, it does a really good job RNI films it's a very very good app for editing for that look that vintage look that people tend to go for underneath this is uh, photo pills and above it is night sky and both of those are planning tools to do the sort of photography that we do here on this channel um, that is photos at night of the stars with your phone um, and next to that is DJI the two apps for DJI one is for the drone when I throw the drone up and take photos of that occasionally and the other one is for the gimbal um, they're the main photo uh, main apps that I use day to day on my phone if you use a different app I'm pretty keen to see what you guys have got to say about those apps if you did know about them all let me know if you didn't know about some of them let me know as well if you want to know more about uh, how to add widgets and stuff let me know and I'll maybe do another video about how to do that sort of stuff but until then guys I'll see you guys later in the week catch you later